Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've been here before. Um, the great thing about this organization is that there's always a contingency plan, you know, from Andrew to Kevin and everybody. Um, so it's the next man up scenario that we had a year ago. And, um, you know, our guys were locked in this morning. We had really good meetings, ODN special teams, and it will come in here, uh, this afternoon for that split walkthrough that you guys know about, uh, to be safe, you know, keep everybody separated as much as we can. And, and hopefully we won't have any more positives and uh, we'll get ready to go win this game on Saturday afternoon. Thank you, coach. First question, Tom Weathers. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Mike. Uh, there are contingency plans and then there are situations that, that get a little bit out of control like this is now. How much worry is there, Mike, that, that we're not done with positive tests? You know, I, I don't know if you sit here worry. I'm a pretty positive, uh, positive uh, attitude guy. Um, you know, we're hoping that there won't be any more. That's That was the goal yesterday, and we had a few more today, unfortunately. And hopefully that uh, the tide has stopped and, uh, you know, we could go to the game with the guys we have. You know, we're going to bring up some guys from the practice squad and uh, some guys that aren't used to playing a lot of football are going to have to go out and play a lot of football. And, but that's why they're here. I mean, that's our practice squad is more of a developmental type squad, not just out there to practice uh, for bodies. Uh, you know, we bring guys in here that we think have a chance to help us win someday, and especially in the age of COVID that, you know, you always have to have that contingency as well when you do sign a young man to the practice squad. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. One hey, Coach, I guess I guess I'm up. Um, you, you mentioned this off the top that you guys went through this last year and have been through this before. So how has that sort of helped with this transition this week? Well, I, I think anytime you're in this situation, um, you know, you've been through it before, you know what worked before. Um, you know, you always learn from the good and the bad. And, and, you know, because like I said, we're so organized here, we, we have a plan for, for pretty much everything. And, uh, you know, we just got to try to follow that blueprint and, and prepare and, and, and prepare for this game as best we can with the time that we have. Um, and, you know, we've played a lot of football this year so far. So our guys know how to play the game. Uh, we know our, our game plans are going to be geared to beat the Las Vegas Raiders and, you know, the, the quicker they pick this up, our guys pick this up, the better off we're going to be and, you know, utilize the time that's available between now and Saturday afternoon. We have plenty of time to get ready and, and we will be ready. And, and then for you, how do you kind of balance, obviously, your duties as the special teams coordinator, but also the possibility that, that you've got to be ready to coach on Saturday? Uh, well, Coach Stefanski will be the head coach up until kickoff. So he's going to handle all that like he always does, like he did a year ago. Um, my job's made pretty easy. We have great coordinators. Uh, we've got a great staff. We've got a team that is resilient, that arrives at the challenge like we did a year ago. Um, you know, I think the game management stuff I'll review again with Dave Giuliani. Dave, Dave and I have already talked. Uh, he's given me a list of stuff. I got to review the same thing we did last year. We met for hours last year before that Pittsburgh playoff game, and we'll meet again this week and uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page. I know the lingo, the terminology, and I, you know, just trust that uh, you know Joe and AVP will do a great job calling the game, and we'll do a great job on special teams. That's the plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Next up, Tony Grossi. Hi, Mike. Um, can you estimate just on on the the known COVID uh, casualties how many positions on your units have been affected? On special teams units? Yes. Well, several. I mean, obviously, anytime, you know, if a safety goes down or a linebacker goes down, a defensive end goes down, a running back goes down, I mean, any wide receiver, any of that stuff, it's all affected. It's like, but, you know, I was doing, it's a good question because I was doing the um, uh, depth charts for tomorrow's practice. And, you know, for we're planning on having a full practice tomorrow. We're open and, you know, we have to use, we're going to work on all six special teams phases, work on offense, work on defense. So when I'm doing the depth charts, it's, it's, it's typical. It's like having an injury. You know, if a running back gets hurt, the next running, like Jernis Johnson moves up and then the backup running back, the next running back up uh, becomes a starter or, or more of a factor on special teams. It's just, it's like game day, and but you have a few more days to plan for it. So, um, you know, we're going to get everybody ready that needs to get ready. And, and we should have plenty of, plenty of guys that are prepared to play the game that will help us win. And uh, with uh, Natson going down, can you, would you say that Felton gets another chance this week? Yeah, you know, he'll be ready. Ernest will be ready. Uh, Donovan will be ready. Um, you know, those guys will be ready. Jamarcus Bradley's got some return ability. He'll be up as well. So we'll get him ready as well. Thank you, Tony. Marla Reidenauer, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Mike, I'm just, you talked about being through this before, but is there something that you 
will do differently this time? I won't challenge a pass that was caught at the knees. Uh, like the last year, I was the dumbest challenge in the history of the league. So I won't do that, I promise. And just the, the fact that Coach Stefanski told us yesterday that he had the booster, does that somewhat alarm you, you know, just that, you know, it, about, about how vulnerable everyone is? I'm not alarmed by it. It doesn't surprise me. It's, this is, it's been insanity since for almost two years now. So, you know, I just kind of roll with the punches. I mean, that's all you can do. If I get alarmed by it, then I won't be able to do my job at a high level. Thank you. Thanks, Marla. Jake Trotter's next. Yeah, hey, Mike, assuming you are able to do a practice uh, Thursday, are you going to be running the practices uh, from here on out? It'll just be the one tomorrow, I would imagine, yes. Okay, yeah. And and if you are not able to, to have a practice tomorrow, if it's another walkthrough, you know, how concerning would that be for you with so many moving parts that your team would be re ready to play on Saturday? I think the mental part, they'll be more than ready. You know, like I said, Alex and, and Joe and myself will do a great job getting our guys ready and get them in the right spots. And, you know, be, if this was week one or two, I think it'd be different, but it's, you know, it's week, what is it, our 14th game? So it's week 15. So because we have so much football under our belt, I'm not as concerned about the physical part of it, but you'd like obviously to have a practice before you go out and play. Thank you, Jake. Daryl Ryder has our next question. Yeah, Mike, I wanted to ask you about the, the practice squad guys because it looks like this is going to be a week. They're going to be needed, and it, probably I'm guessing on special teams as well. Just a lot of those guys you might have to plug in. Just how, how comfortable are you with them? I mean, obviously, if you didn't have confidence in them, they wouldn't be on the practice squad. But just the challenge of having to incorporate guys that don't normally get those regular special uh, those regular reps in practice now – potentially being asked to actually play in a game here? Well, several of those guys that'll be elevated. I've already played in games. They've, they've either been a COVID elevation or a practice squad elevation before. Um, so those guys will be ready. Um, the guys that we have, they're in every special teams meeting. They pay attention. They get coached. We coach them on the show teams. I will, when we watch tape, we'll coach the show teams guys. Obviously not as much as the guys that are on the uh, regular units, but um, they understand their role. I think they'll relish that role. They're excited about the role and they'll be ready. Thank you, Daryl. Scott Patrick, we'll go to you. Hey, Mike, I got some special teams questions for you. Um, with Chase, are you noticing any pattern with the misses that he's had? The only thing I can tell you is that I think he needs to keep his head down a little bit longer and, and follow through towards his target a little bit more. That's something we've talked about now the last few weeks. Uh, I don't believe he did that on the one he missed. Obviously, that's one that we have to have in the fourth quarter, which would have made it, I think, a, a – 18 point game. That was a big miss. And he needs to make those. And with the onside kick, look like a lot of linebackers out there on the hands team. Can you just explain the philosophy behind that? I'm not putting anybody out there that, that doesn't have good enough hands to recover a kick, but you need bodies out there to protect in front of the, um, the whoever ends up with the ball. Usually it's a tight end. You know, we had Hooper on one side. Uh, we had Donovan on the other side. So it's a bigger receiver, a tight end. Um, you know, Andy's recovered two onside kicks last year. I trust him fully. He'll be out there again this week. Uh, he understands what he did. You know, we always talk about if you can recover that ball right at you, make a quick decision, grab it and go down. And if it's too hot or too fast or it's a bad bounce, get out of the way and then block. He didn't, he didn't do either. And he knows that. And we talked about it. We showed it this morning and that should never happen. I think we were aligned perfectly. We spent a lot of time in the offseason making sure we had the right alignments and spent a lot of time with Coach Stefanski on, on the best. I mean, we spent hours and, and the best way to handle that new with the new rule. Uh, that wasn't a factor at all. We were aligned perfectly. Uh, we just didn't execute the play. Um, but I do want to add, you know, I, I know people might have mentioned the hands team playing the field goal. Up until that point, I thought we had played really well in teams. We covered kicks extremely well. We kept the, a lot of the punt returners' hand. Uh, we made four other kicks. Uh, the, the play that JoJo made was a phenomenal play. Uh, Janovich had a great play uh, on the mortar kick. I mean, we handle all those situations extremely well. We had two bad plays that we can't have in order to put away a good football team. We can't make those mistakes. But up until that point, I thought we played pretty well. Thanks, Mike. Yes, sir. Thank you, Scott. Nate Ulrich, you're up. Hey, Mike. Uh, you know, obviously with – with you and Alex Van Pelt handling those um, duties, you know, filling in for Kevin in Pittsburgh, you know, that that gives you guys experience to lean on. And I'm wondering if you see kind of a, a, a similar scenario with Case Keenum. You know, it wasn't in a, in a playoff game, but 
primetime game on Thursday night, you guys had to turn to him. What what is your feel for Case Keenum and and uh, you know, do you have any thoughts on Baker? Uh, obviously, with all the injuries he's gone through this season, and now another turn for him with COVID. You know, obviously, I feel bad for Baker. You know, he's the leader of this football team as our quarterback. Um, you know, losing him hurt. But the great thing about Case is, I mean, he's an amazing young man. I've known Case a long time. We were together in Minnesota. Um, he's always stepped up to the occasion um, when it, when his name was called. He's always been there. You know, he led us to the uh, playoffs in Minnesota. I think we ended up 13-3 and three that year, and he was our quarterback for all but one game, I think. Um, you know, he filled in against the Broncos, did a phenomenal job. Uh, thank God we have Case Keenum, I'll be honest with you, because if you had a, a real young quarterback, an experienced quarterback, it might be tougher, but Case is going to run the game plan exactly how it should be run, and, and I know the whole team has confidence in him. Thank you, Nate. Final question, Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, can you just talk a little bit, Mike, about how um, how well Alex Van Pelt did with the play calling last year and why uh, guys should be confident heading into this game with him handling that chore again? I think the, both the defense and Coach Woods and, and offense and Coach Van Pelt and everybody should be extremely confident going in. I mean, we forced a bunch of turnovers. We had a great game plan on defense. We had a great game plan on offense. I thought we had a great game plan on special teams. And we went out and executed a game against a really good football team that at one point had been 12-0 and 0 last year. So, um, you know, we all have confidence in, in each other. I think we have an outstanding staff uh, from top to bottom. And, uh, you know, looking forward to the challenge. You know, I wish, you know, hopefully Kevin will be okay for Saturday. Uh, but if not, then we'll be ready to roll. 